Good evening, side friends. It's me, the man, coming back at you from Walk with Music. Yet another word for the day. Um, I'm gonna try to do this here as a, like a a little mini mini Bible study. We'll call it a mini. I'm not gonna go as long as I would perhaps on the regular Bible study, but we're gonna do a little mini. I uh, I was got I had got caught up into the uh, music scene in the last couple of days, trying to get me to deadline and. Therefore, uh, I did not, I did not actually do the Bible study on Thursday. Nevertheless, we we still give God the praise and give Him all the glory for life, health, and strength for as well as it is. And we also thank God for all the cyber friends. You know who you are, no doubt. You know who you are. Well, we just want to say, I, as the title of my video tonight, it said the example of Abraham. And uh, I'm already on a tr on a trip back through the Bible again. I I do it once a year, but I think I'm gonna go for twice this year because I got finished so early in the part of the year back in June. So I decided I would go ahead on and start it up again. And uh, I just wanted I, I I got fascinated again by Abraham. And um, we wanted to say like I said, I call this the example of Abraham. The reason I call it that is because I've noticed something uh, very, very um, unique about Abraham. He was called a friend of God. He was called a friend of God. He said because of his faith. And Abraham believed God. He just, point blank, Abraham believed God. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. As we look at Abraham, when he went down into Egypt, and uh, he was afraid because of Sarah, his wife. Um, she was uh, one of the, what we would call in our modern day words, she was one of those fine gals. In other words, she was very, very, very good looking to look upon. And no doubt, she was top to bottom good looking. And so Abraham was afraid that uh, the Egyptians would kill him. On for her, you know, in order to take her from him, where they could have her as their own. But nevertheless, we know the story. I look at how God orchestrated that, even to the point that He would not even let Pharaoh even touch his wife, because he surely would have been a dead man. And does know some things. God is not. God does not bend His rules for no one. But as we notice that, one thing I noticed that when Abraham left Egypt, Abraham was rich in cattle and gold and silver. He was a very wealthy man. Letting us know that there's nothing wrong with being wealthy, people. There's nothing wrong with having wealth, but the wealth should not have us. I put it like that. But at any rate, what's so interesting, what I looked at and I thought again about Abraham and the example of Abraham, him and his nephew Lot, they between the two of them the land could not even hold them for their for they had great possession both of them were very very rich and their cattlemen their cattlemen or the herdsmen I should say of Lot they was in strife with Abraham's herdsmen and Abraham said this should not be so among kinfolk and he told Lot to separate himself from him and uh that it be let it not be strife between us, because we are family. He said, uh, "If you go to the right, I will surely go to the left, and if you don't go to the left, I go to the right." In other words, Abraham will humble himself, even though you would think that Lot would have been the one that would have let Abraham choose. But nevertheless, that they're going to show you the mentality of some people. But nevertheless, we know the story. Uh, Lot set his face towards Sodom because the land was fertile. He called himself getting the best of the best. That's just the way some people are. But nevertheless, Abraham did not argue. Abraham didn't argue with him at all. He let him chose the best land. And he went and he stayed in Canaan. And as the story goes, there was some five kings that went up against Sodom or more. They joined the Confederacy and they went up against Sodom and Gomorrah and they captured the women and the children and, and all that they had down there and 
Matter of fact, they even captured Lot and his family, which was, uh, like I said, Abraham's um, nephew. So Abraham got all of the servants that were in his household, over 318 uh, people that was in his, born in his household, his servants, he trained them, he, that was trained and brought up in his way in his household. And they, as we know the story of gold, they went down and they fought against these kings and they took back the spoil. And they uh, freed all the people and brought a lot back and everything. And everybody was very, very happy. Even to the king of uh, Sodom, they offered uh, Abraham the loot. Abraham said, no, I swear by God, I would not take nothing from you. In other words, Abraham was saying that you, you, if you're not going to say that you made me nothing, that you gave me anything. And you know what? That's a good way to be sometimes. Because uh, most times people will hold you to a status quo. In other words, that make you feel that you owe them something because of the fact that if they do something for you, they'll make you... They'll sometimes they'll hold it against you and hold it over your head and say, well, now you wouldn't have been this if it had not been for me doing this. And Abraham was not going to have Sodom, the king of Sodom, with that over his head. So he said, no, you keep yours. I will not take nothing from you. And uh, so therefore, to this day, that is a good example for some of us to follow. Be very careful of who you connect yourself to and who you associate yourself with. And everybody that and we could take it from Jesus that everybody that kissed you or smile on your face is not your friend. You remember Judas. So even though Jesus tried to give him the, down to the last minute, he tried to, tried to reason with him. But the most important thing that we see about Abraham in this story, and this is how come I say the example of Abraham. When Abraham met the king of Salem, the priest, Melchizedek, he paid his tithe. To him, Kim and Melchizedek it came, and uh, uh, matter of fact, uh, Abraham. This is the first time that we see this being done in the Bible, in 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 in, in, in the first fruit given and whatnot. And then we see that by Abraham, Abraham really started something. He set an example. God began to deal with Abraham. God called him the father. Of he said he was going to be the father of many nations. And then the covenant that God cut with Abraham, remember, Abraham had nothing to do with it. It was God that walked through. If you notice, he told him to divide the animals and put them apart. And then and he, made, he made Abraham fall into a deep sleep. This was showing him, and then he saw the smoking furnace, the burning furnace that came and went down through the parts of the beast that was slain and the sacrifices that were made. Letting us know that this covenant God kept it. This was a covenant that God was going to keep, and God was going. It was going to have nothing to do with Abraham. And guess what? It got nothing to do with me and you. And you know what, people? We got to understand some things. And I learned from Abraham and from that story, from this one when Abraham came out of Egypt and his wealth had grew so much, and then the separating of himself from his kinfolk. And then the refusing to take the riches from the king of, of uh, evil. Because Sodom was a very, very evil place, people. Sodom was a very evil place and wicked. And then, uh, matter of fact, God ended up destroying Sodom and Gomorrah for the wickedness. Because he couldn't find ten righteous. So anytime anybody asks you, why did God destroy Sodom? And they tell you, homosexuality, no, that's not the answer. He's destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because he couldn't find ten righteous people in the whole cities that's why he destroyed the city maybe Abraham should have just said would you destroy would you spare the city just for one righteous one that would have been his his nephew Lot and in so many words Lot when it's righteous that we were pretend just like a lot of us not as righteous we say we are but thank God for Jesus see in other words it has nothing to do with you and it has nothing to do with me we thank God for Jesus because if we if it had something to do with Midi Man, or oh, Midi Man be messed up. And so would you. So would you. But thank God that God kept this covenant. 
there was a covenant that God was going to do. God was going to make certain that this covenant take place. And therefore, he put Abraham to sleep. Abraham didn't have nothing to do with it. He put him in a trance. God walked through the sacrifice, meaning that I'm going to make this good. And guess what? When God makes something good, you can count on it. Because I've learned through life experience that there are very few people that you can really count on when it comes down to it. You know, uh, we talk. We talk a lot, and uh, we say swelling words, but we got to remember, people, we are human. And uh, the Bible tells me, do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. In other words, now, I've noticed, as a matter of fact, me and, uh, me and old brother JT have talked about this here many, many times. A lot of people, they want you to do a whole lot when it comes to getting on a program. And then when they want you on their program, they want you to go over and above the call of duty. But it's a different story when that thing turns around. I agree with that 100%. But you know what? You cannot worry about that. But you must go on and do what you must do. In other words, don't hold grudges. Do not. Matter of fact, I got a friend of mine. We often talk about that. You never hold grudges and stuff. But you just go on. You move on. You go beyond that. In other words, this shows that your this shows your maturity. In other words, are you able to get over things? Because they just sit around and just keep on talking about the same thing over and over and over and over. It's like a tape recorder. It sounds like a broken record. That's not going to help anything. That's not going to help the cause at all. But you just go on. In other words, just like that old, that old, that old rabbit in that, that commercial about that, uh, them batteries. Uh, they keep on going and going and going. And that rabbit be twirling his drum thing and he be beating his drum and that old, I, I, I can't even call. I don't know why I can't think of the name of that old rabbit. Uh, Duracell battery, I think it is. That's the Duracell rabbit or whatever. But at any rate, it, it, it says a lot. It's just like the Timex. It take a licking but keep on ticking. That's we are, as Christians, as ch children of God, we must learn to take a licking. But we keep on ticking. We, mo we go on in spite of ourselves, in spite of others. We yet and still we go on. So with that being said, this middle man got, this, like I said, I got double rehearsals tomorrow. Double rehearsal, as usual. That's just about every Saturday. Hardly ever I get a free Saturday. But it's back to business as usual. On tomorrow, got a double double tape. But we thank God for life, health, and strength. We thank God to be able to be able to do it. Matter of fact, if we weren't able to do it, if we were sick or in bad health, we would be complaining about that. So we're not going to worry. But we thank God. And like we say in Isaiah 53, said, by his stripes, we are healed. Matter of fact, regardless of how the body may feel, but we keep claiming by his strife, we are healed. So with that being said, this many man saying whatever you get, whatever you get into it, God is not in it. Come on out of it, people, because it's going to come to nothing. With that being said, this many man have a great weekend out there. Be careful out there, people, because the life you save may very well be your own. Remember, the devil is busy. He's not taking no name. He's taking you out if he can. That being said, this many man saying peace. Good night.